Welcome back to the Ping Pong Flick Show. My name is Chris Wong. I'm going to call this a Marvel Day today. There's some Marvel news today, um, which is kind of cool uh, that they are coming out with some interesting things. And for the Marvel fans out there, this could be exciting for you. But let's get right into the topics before the Marvel stuff. Is The first thing, Umberto Gonzalez from The Wrap just tweeted out this GIF of what appears to be the matrix i mean when you look at that this is all i can think of is the matrix so i'm thinking that he is saying there is going to be a news dropping for the matrix for soon a trailer maybe if it's a trailer i'm all in on that let's go uh maybe tomorrow morning i don't know but seemingly that there is going to be something major coming for the matrix four really soon so we'll get to see a trailer with keanu reeves and everybody that would be pretty awesome all right, so that is a bit about that. Anya Taylor-Joy provides an update on Mad Max prequel Furiosa. Now, I am a huge Mad Max uh, Fury Road fan. I love the other Mad Max ones as well. Thundertome, not so much. But like, uh, but Mad Max Fury Road absolutely is one of my favorites. It, it maybe even tops, I know. It tops the Mel Gibson ones. Yeah, <laughs> for me it does. Um, and I even had a little uh, video, a John Red Citra video about Furiosa that you can click on up right up there. But she provides a small update. She recently confirming that the production of the film will likely kick off before the end of the summer. Uh, and that she has a grace period uh, until August, and then she'll be working back-to-back -back until mid-2023. Uh, the thing that makes her most excited about Furiosa is, number one, George Miller. That brain is incredible. I'm also really excited to do something physical. To physically become something else is something that will weirdly give me a lot of peace. And so she's definitely a, a, a fantastic actress. I mean, she's incredible in Queen's Gambit and everything I've seen her in. Uh, even that even that the little X-Men, uh, uh, well, it wasn't really X-Men, but it, 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 yeah, they're part of the X-Men. But um, that was awesome as well. And I think uh, she could do really well as Furiosa. She can definitely transform her character in different ways. And so I'm really eager to see that movie and that also has Chris from Chris Hemsworth is going to be in that too although the role uh, is unknown yet and Yahya Abdul Martina II is also in there as well all right moving forward uh, Geeks Worldwide has a little little update I guess on the Peacemaker show that's coming on HBO Max the first three episode titles of Peacemaker was revealed uh, information has been under wraps on Peacemaker for quite a bit sources at the Geek Worldwide has recently learned the titles for the first three episodes Peacemaker will be the first spin-off TV show in the DC Extended Universe while it's certainly an odd and interesting choice in um, in Ajep Art's opinion I believe it shows that Warner Brothers has faith in the world James Gunn is building the Suicide Squad which is where we'll meet Peacemaker and DCU for the first time played by John Cena based on the character created by Joe Gill and Pat Boyette uh, Peacemaker is an origin series that follows Christopher Smith also known as Peacemaker played by John Cena an extremist murderer who believes he's on a quest for peace killing anyone and everyone to achieve his ultimate goal uh, below listing the titles for the first three episodes episode one a whole new world <laughs> world world uh, episode two best friends never so definitely a play on words and, and quotes here. Better Goff Dead. So it means like go off dead or better off dead. So yeah, that's it. That's pretty much it for what is the titles for the Peacemaker episodes. All right, moving on. DC Verso put this out. Uh, this is... Uh, well, it's actually from Collider. Quintin, Quintessa Swindle talked a little about her Cyclone character in Black Adam. So there's a certain level of realism to the character. And that's very beautiful. Seeing what they're doing with the script and seeing what they're doing with DC as a whole is just plain very beautiful. Uh, it's inspiring the direction they're, direction they're taking and being able to be part of the, that process definitely means something. The values she, Cyclone, has at her core are values that align with what I believe in and what I admire. So um, that's cool. I mean, things like not many, I guess, you know, it, not many directors like to have um, the actors and actresses to, you know, be a part of the creative 
of their character and there's a lot of directors that do that as well so it's interesting to see that it is taking place for at least Quintessa Swindle that she's going she's coming in and she's like I want to do this with my character I think this should do this with my character and they're actively working together instead of coming in and says okay what part do I play who do you want me to be um, they're actively including her into that creative process um, which is actually really cool I think that's really nice to see and hear that Grace Randolph has a little update uh, amongst these other things. The, the He-Man rumors, she's talking about is the animated one. Um, right. Oh my god. And then, although we'll be watching Loki together, oh, she's going to be watching Loki. Um, but this is the one that uh, is interesting. She said the Batman is doing some additional filming. Here's hoping like it's Rogue One and turns out even better. Now to clarify, uh, movies go through additional shooting all the time. There's uh, the plan reshoots just in case the director goes into the post-production and says you know I see something that I didn't like let's do this better I don't like how I filmed that you know there's many different reasons and I think because of our PTSD in terms of Justice League that we're always actively thinking about the negatives of additional shooting or reshoots and stuff like that so there's nothing really to be kind of afraid about or you know or, or maybe, maybe there is something, but the whole, and she, she obviously threw Rogue One in there, <laughs> and so that was major, I mean, that was from Gareth Edwards to, an, I forgot the uh, second director, uh, Gareth Evans, uh, and then those, uh, where is it? I, I keep mixing up the two, but the one who made Godzilla 2014, and having that person, um, they changed the ending, the battles a little bit, as you see in the trailer in the actual movie, so, how how substantial is that the Batman's going to be doing? How much additional photography is going to be involved? And if there are any reshoots at all, and why? But that's always the question for every single movie. So I don't think there's anything here that we should be um, afraid of at this point. But I guess we'll have to wait and see about that. Okay, Zack Snyder had a small little tweet today, um, and it's pretty epic. This is a way to workshop. I'm going to turn off the sound just in case of copyright. Zack Snyder's Justice League. Uh, you actually get to see, I'm going to fast forward here. You, you actually see them make the figure, the armor for Dark Side. Um, they got the Superman head here. This part is kind of cool where his, his eyes just kind of light up. I didn't know that. I didn't know they actually do that for those figures i thought it was just something it was just you know painted and or whatever but it looks pretty cool dark side's throne being painted um dark side himself looks really cool um and actually a lot bigger than i you know thought i, I didn't think it was going to be that that big but it's a pretty substantial size i'm sure it's very very expensive <laughs> i'm sure but you can pre-order now so you can go to that website right there pre-order now wet and whatever and just slash uh justice league so if you want to check that out that's kind of cool moving right along lots of stuff to cover zack snyder's justice league is now available to purchase in on 4k uhd blu-ray in the uk u.s shipping is available however this disc is technically regionally coded um and i've i've put that i'm gonna put down that same link i, I put it on a community post but if you want to check it out on amazon it's in the in the comments pinned comments down below so you can check that out and i've been getting feedback saying that no that's not true it is region free you can play it on your in, in on in us and um and it's fine it works out fine so and it's about like 20 to 30 dollars so it's not that bad i thought it was going to be like the 50 or 70 dollar range where some people were paying like 70 bucks on ebay and stuff like that but now you can actually buy it um amazon global uk um and and check if it's if it's available in your country i don't know but um the link is down below so check that out and make a purchase if you want to uh and yeah see Zack Snyder's just a league on your very own TV if you don't have HBO Max or don't want HBO Max anymore man and in 4k so that's kind of cool all right so there's that all right well let's get into some Marvel 
for some people who are interested in Marvel. This is our first look as Jane as Thor. This is Thor Love and Thunder, um, which is interesting because, you know, in all the Love and Thunder set picks and stuff like that, uh, Thor had like a white t-shirt or white, you know, um, you know, tank top and that's it. And, and it was, had jeans on, but uh, obviously he's probably going to have some armor in there. And of course, Thor Love and Thunder, uh, but you get, do get to see um, Jane right there as Thor, She's completely in armor. She's actually got the helmet on, um, so I've actually she pretty much looks like the comic book character that she portrays there. So, um, I don't know, is she going to have cancer just like in the comics and getting the hammer then turning and uh, turning into... The personification of Thor, just like in the comics. Well, there is this little video that's been going around where Natalie Portman's stuntman uh, is rehearsing a scene on the set of Thor Love and Thunder in Sydney. And it's interesting because they're propping her up and she's like, no, like she's getting her powers, right? That the, the lightning probably struck her and she's like turning into Thor right there. So she's turning into a Thor, to, a Thor <laughs> turning to Thor at that moment. So they're practicing that little thing. So that might be how that actually happens for Thor Love and Thunder. So there's Natalie Portman returns to Marvel. All right, some Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Apparently the editor for Sam Raimi's original Spider-Man film, Bob Murawski, I think I said that right. It's currently editing Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness 2022 for Marvel Studios. And that's that's interesting because Sam Raimi is doing Doctor Strange and he's bringing his like almost like his entire team over there because every director likes their they have their own team. They they have their own people that they work with. He's bringing Danny Elfman for the music. He's now bringing an editor for Sam Raimi, uh, you know, editor so from Sam Raimi, editor from the original Spider-Man film. He's bringing them all into the Doctor Strange. He's like, "I'm back in Marvel, baby. I'm going to bring all my buddies into the Marvel uh, world." Um, and here's hoping that he actually brought in Tobey Maguire. <laughs> I don't know, but uh, that that will be in that own another Spider-Man film that is actually coming out, which I'm going to talk about right now. So I'm gonna turn this off because I want to make sure you understand that the next things I'm gonna be talking about is leaks, just like the Batman leaks I talked about. Apparently, there is a Spider-Man No Way Home leaks, and this was a while back. This is, I think people have already talked about this, but I decided to, I, I saw it, and someone brought it up, and I was like, okay, I'll talk about it. I'll put it on the show. I'll put it as leaks, spoilers. If you don't want to hear anything on potential spoilers, and this could not even be true at all, but if you don't want to hear anything in the, in the, that it could be true, then please... Um, you can go ahead to, to the members comments if you want to and uh, thank you very much for watching all right here we go are you ready spider-man no way home leaks from 4chan kind of like the how we got the batman leaks here we go uh sounds kind of plausible okay well let's see peter is on the run after the identity reveal in F far from home ned and mj are with him since they're accomplices to his crimes Doctor Strange, at Happy's request, finds them in a homeless shelter undercover where he brings them back to the Sanctum and tells them to lay low while he figures out a way to fix everything. In the Sanctum, Peter comes across a sort of bigger on-the-inside prison where Go Green Goblin, Doc Ock, and Sandman Ra Raimiverse, uh, Sandman Raimiverse, really? And the Lizard and Electro, uh, the Amazing Spider-Man verse, are being held. Willem Dafoe manages to trick Peter into thinking that their universe's Spider-Man were corrupted and killed them, and Peter needs to free them so they can save their planets. <laughs> oh, you mean their universe? Peter frees them, and they escape into the city. Well, Strange shows up and tears Peter a new one, explains that he has been holding them in his prison due to instability in the multiverse, connected to each uh, dimension's Oscorp, experimenting with interdimensional travel, and says Peter has a responsibility to stop them. Defoe leads the villains to the MCU Oscorp building to steal prototype interdimensional technology. Peter tries to stop them, but he gets his ass kicked and thrown aside. 
Strange rescues him and says they'll need more help, Strange and Peter travel into the Raimi-verse. Oh my god, an amazing Spider-Man-verse, and we see how the Peters are living after the conclusion of their series. Toby is married to MJ, is Kirsten Dunst in this, and they have a daughter, Andrew is a college professor. Through their connection to their home universes, the villains sense that their Spider-Men are likely on their way. They use the Oscorp device to open a one-way portal into the Amazing Spider-Man verse with the Amazing Spider-Man Rhino barging through. Um, the Sinister Six are Goblin, Ock, Sandman, the Lizard, Electro, and the Rhino. There's a lot of characters in the movie. The full Osborn realizes the way to open two-way portals and thus get back their own universes is to power the Osborn device with a Stark power core. The foe gets it. The other S6 distract the Spider-Man. The Sinister Six minus Osborn and Spider-Man fight at the Statue of Liberty, which Defoe Osborn plans on using to open portals back to their worlds and to trap the Spider-Man here. Toby is beaten way harder than the younger Spideries and ends up... Oh, no! Dying? No! Oh, I don't like this at all. Oh, uh, what? Go Goblin finally shows up with the device and Ned. The device is activated, but they manage to stop him and the protect and protect Ned in a two versus one fight with him. But he manages to miss them with a pumpkin bomb and kill Ned. Tom Spider-Man nearly kills Goblin, but Andrew stops him from becoming a villain like them. The Sinister Stick Six get locked up in Strange's prison. Tom and Andrew attend Toby's funeral. In the Raimi verse and seemingly part ways, Tom turns himself and is successfully defended from murder Kate charges by Matt Murdock, but his secret identity isn't resolved. Matt Murdock? Is it Charlie Cox? Tom shows up to Ned's grave, and I just realized that Ned just died too. Oh my god. And how he feels responsible for his death when Andrew shows back up and gives him the responsibility talk. Tom realizes Ned, like Uncle Ben, Tony, and Toby, Peter would want him to still be a hero. Final swing is both Tom and Andrew in the streets of MCU New York. That's heavy. Um, now, I didn't think Toby was going to die. Ned was going to die. I mean, obviously, this is just a, this is just some thing on Reddit, but, you know, it is sound plausible. And if it's true... Tom Holland is still messing things up. His character is always messing things up. Like every movie. <laughs> I, I don't... Uh, but Toby, come on, man. That ain't right. Well, I hope this is not true. <laughs> Just for to say, I hope this is not true. Um, I was thinking that maybe they'll come in and then they could do Spider-Man 4 and The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what, what to think of this. I'm kind of heartbroken if this is true. I, I really don't want Tobey Maguire's Spider-Man to die. Um, man, that sucks. Well... What do you guys think about this? you guys believe in it? Have you already heard it, read it? Uh, and let me know your reactions and stuff. Pretty much Marvel-centric video. Hopefully you even clicked on it. If you're not, well, maybe better luck next time. But thank you so much for watching. Like I said, if you absolutely love this daily dose of entertainment news and content, please click the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Ring that notification bell. Keep this hot dog light on. And I'll see you next time.